Hi everybody, this is your weekly horoscope for the week starting Monday the 6th of June and going through until Sunday the 12th of June. It's really nice to be with you today, thank you for joining me. These weekly horoscopes are like an astrological weather report, okay? I look at what's going on in the heavens and how that's going to impact us as humanity living on planet Earth. So the first thing that happens on Monday the 6th of June is that the moon goes into the sign of Cancer at 3.42 a.m. And that's based on Greenwich Mean Time. So if you're in America, that'll be happening a little bit ahead of you. If you're in Australia, it'll be a little bit behind. Don't get too hung up on the... Um, on the timings of this it's not like at 314 when something changes the energy shift it's much more gradual so just as long as you kind of take it into account a little bit you'll be fine so the moon does go into cancer and it starts to semi square mercury in taurus and it trines neptune in pisces so what you'll notice at the beginning of the week is that you're going to have uh, somewhat of an emotional reaction to your circumstances okay you'll be very much focused on what's really going on especially in a practical sense and you'll have this underlying sense of well this is the way it could be and this is the way it ought to be it's very passive in nature you kind of go into the day things happen and you kind of make sense of them and you kind of perceive them going on around you okay so expect things to go either way if you know your life is absolutely blissful everything is 100 percent perfect so that's going to be very few of you then that's fine you can observe and feel things and really feel um satisfied and happy about how good your circumstances are if there's something that still needs to be looked at or something that needs to be altered in your life then that'll come up and it'll cause some feelings in you it'll cause an emotional response so just be aware of that the next day the energy shifts a little bit and you start to have a burning desire to do something about these emotions that you started to experience on Monday, the previous day. So Monday is kind of 10 out of 10, 10 for the emotional side of things. Also listen to your intuition and the guidance you get. On the Tuesday, it'll be much more about fire then and putting actions into place and actually moving ahead and acting on some of these emotions that you've had. The reason for that is the moon is now still in Cancer at 18 degrees and it begins to connect with Mars. It forms a trine with Mars. Mars is in retrograde, in Scorpio, and then it also squares Uranus in Aries. So that can mean that it's a sense of restlessness, irritability. I don't like the way things are looking. I want to do something about that. Then Uranus in Aries is really going to kick in and it's going to say, well, if you don't like something, do something about it. Push through the obstacles make changes, go ahead and do it. So Tuesday is a really good day to actually take action because the emotions will be building up and they'll be kind of forcing you and pushing you to do something about it. So that's, it can translate in lots of different ways. If you're sick of the country you live in and you want to apply for the visa and you've thought about it for years, that will come to a kind of build up crescendo within you emotionally and you'll do something about it and move forward. That can be relationships, it can be work, but it's almost like you're driven to make changes. So be aware of that for the week coming up that you can't just turn a blind eye and sweep things under the rug and hope they'll go away. You will feel the urge to do something about it. Now Wednesday, the moon goes into Leo at 6.48 a.m., again based on Greenwich Mean Time, and it begins to semi-square Venus in Gemini and the Sun in Gemini. Now this is a super positive day. The moon in Leo is much more about publicity and look at me and taking the limelight and feeling very comfortable in your own skin and feeling very comfortable about having other people look at you. So this is the best day for publicity, the limelight, fame, you're at your most fabulous. You've got the Venus, the planet of love and beauty in the very communicative, optimistic, positive sign of Gemini. Connect with the sun, with this Leo energy. It's really a fabulous day to do something public, okay? So if you have, if you have the opportunity to plan a presentation during the week, or if you have a job interview where you really want to come across very well, or you've got some sort of performance planned where you want to you know, play an instrument or recite some poetry, Wednesday gets 10 out of 10 for fame and publicity for you. So pick that day to do anything to do with the public sphere. Things then move on again as well. And it is a, it is a highly changeable week. As you can see, things are moving quite quickly. So really get your 
get your shoes on kind of on Monday and be ready to, to cover a lot of ground this week. It's not just going to be about sitting back and letting things happen. There's a lot going on. So on Thursday, the 9th of June, then the moon is still in Leo. But it begins to sextile now the sun in Gemini, so that's a very easy connection. And it trines Saturn in Sagittarius and trines Uranus in Aries. Okay, so what happens now is that the previous desire to take action and to make things happen on Tuesday it was kind of like an emotional drive, you were kind of compelled to do so. On Wednesday, it felt much more positive and easy, and it was like, oh, yeah, let's perform. You know, on Thursday, it's about being very critical looking at the structures that are in place and saying oh no 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 this won't do i don't like this at all and being super super certain of what you think ought to be changed or to be done and making changes so this is a very strident kind of energy and being very strident in a relationship for instance doesn't work very well if you with your partner you sit down and you're like I really don't like the way you eat and that is now unacceptable to me and you better do something about it or we're done. That doesn't give the other person a lot of choice and room to make changes. So really be careful of how you come across, how critical you are on that Thursday and what you're trying to achieve with that. Kind of um, be a little bit extra gently, gently does it because things are going to be very, um, you're going to have a natural harshness. There's just someone coming up the path now, so just bear with me. We've got um, Friday the 10th of June now. Um, the moon moves into Virgo, heightening that critical energy. And it moves into Virgo at 1.47 in the afternoon. Again, Greenwich Mean Time. It begins to square Mercury and Taurus and squares Mars and Scorpio. Mars is in retrograde in Scorpio at the moment. It's, it's a little bit of frustration. It's kind of eating your own feelings a little bit. Virgo is critical and decisive anyway. So this day, remember yesterday you were really, really strident and rock solid about what works, what doesn't work. On Friday, I think you're going to have very little patience for people who don't fall into line and who don't conform to your agenda. Okay, so Thursday and Friday really is a good day to um, focus on work and really apply that very strong, powerful, uncompromising in some sort of working arena. You know, that kind of energy is useful if you're trying to get a project done or if you're trying to uh, complete work that really needs a strong sense of structure and focus. It's not so good for relationships because, you know, people don't operate like that. We're not robots. But if you have something concrete, tangible, practical to achieve and Thursday Friday are really really good for those okay so watch out for potential arguments on Friday with loved ones because I really don't think you're at your most compromising or forgiving and again you know that needs to be there if you're trying to build you know a, a skyscraper for instance you need to be structured and clear but if you're going to a restaurant and having a nice evening then being having that wall in place really isn't helpful to you or the other person so then we move on into the weekend and saturday is the luckiest day that you will have this week it is super super positive and the reason for that is the moon in virgo begins to conjunct so sit together with jupiter in virgo jupiter is the planet of success and growth and good fortune and the moon is what makes you feel most um, at ease what you naturally are like and what you have a PhD in already so the two kind of come together silver and gold sparkling in the heavens there and it means that um, this is a day when you take any practical action that feels right listen to your feelings listen to your intuition when you do that the luck factor is on your side and it's very likely that you have a good positive outcome okay underneath all of this please remember that for the most of June we've got a mutable grand cross in the sky and that lasts until the 24th 25th of June and that is really underpinning all of this other energy that's going on a grand cross is an area of real friction and movement it connects a couple of things it connects uh, Mercury in Gemini Jupiter in Virgo Saturn in Sagittarius and Neptune in Pisces so on one hand you're going to want to criticize the way forward and, and make things better the other thing you're probably interested in is just checking out a little bit and using your imagination and going away to some retreat 
then you'll want to learn and study and communicate at the same time and tell jokes and be funny. And then you may also want to really um, sort out your whole working life and to organize your filing cabinet and to make everything practical and work. Now, that's a lot, okay? So you only have 24 hours in a day. Give yourself a break. Grand crosses are good to give you lots of energy and movement. What they're not so good at is kind of structuring things, doing one thing after the next, and it can feel a little bit overwhelming. So keep things simple during this week and through until the end of June. Can it be nice to yourself? The la a lack of energy is not the problem. A lack of focus and structure and organization is the problem. So look at altering things that way. So this is 10 out of 10 for luck, okay, on Saturday. Then we're moving on to Sunday, the 12th of June, and this is the best day now for fun, for love, and for making up for disappointments from the past, okay? And it's interesting that we've now got a couple walking behind me, which kind of emphasizes that again, because it is about love and romance, okay? So it's the first quarter moon. The moon is moving towards being a full moon. So it's waxing, it's getting bigger and brighter, and it's at its first quarter. So it's 90 degrees away from the sun in Gemini. So this is a really nice stopping off point, a real nice um, growth point in terms of connecting with other people in a practical sense, enjoying their company, having fun, telling jokes, um, being intimate with each other, you know, um, just enjoying each other's company and having fun with each other. And there's a sense of growth and building and things coming together to this wonderful finale. Okay, so it's a really good time for love and romance and um, that's the best day to kind of plan anything with your partner or if you want to go out one day this week, do it on Sunday, it's really, really fun on that day. So the moon in Virgo does square that Gemini sun and the Gemini Venus. And finally, we've got the moon opposing Chiron in Pisces. So the fun that you have in the here and now can really make up for some of the past disappointments that you've had. So let's say, you know, my last three relationships have been with narcissists and I'm almost losing hope here because people just seem so self-interested and self-absorbed. Then I meet someone in the here and now and we go out and have a fabulous day and someone is extremely solicitous towards me, for example, and really cares about how I'm feeling and that I'm in a good place. And the fun and the positivity and the joy that I experience on that day really puts the last three negative relationships into a different perspective and makes me think about that relationship differently. So that's what I mean by the good in the here and now being able to make up for past negative experiences. So that's a really, really good day. Um, so love, romance, um, going on a new date with someone new, you know, blind date, meeting someone for the first time, having fun with someone who's already established in your life, or even picking up the phone to someone who you've lost contact with, a family member you fell out with, kind of rebuilding that bridge. It's a really, really good day to communicate, to be optimistic, to build new concrete structures for the future and to connect with people. Okay. And that couple echoed that. So it's, it's that's really nice so I hope that gives you an idea of what you'll be working with in um, this week of June if you would like a private reading with me please visit my website it's gregoryscott.com click on the readings tab and you can choose your reading with me there just order it and I will be in touch with the schedule so we can get it booked in please remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel please 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 it actually helps the videos show up so if you uh, just click on the subscribe button Check out my daily tarot readings, these weekly astrology forecasts, the monthly astrology forecast for your sign of the zodiac. And I also do live readings on Facebook and Periscope. So go to facebook.com forward slash Gregory Scott 444. I do live sessions where I answer quick questions. And that's really designed for people who struggle to afford a reading or really, you know, things are really tough. So I do that um, just to connect with you guys as well. It's facebook.com forward slash Gregory Scott 444 and on Periscope it's also Gregory Scott 444.